assalamu alaikum everyone so we'll continue with our lecture on leveling so uh, now we'll talk about some methods to find difference in levels uh, we've already discussed a few in the introduction uh, but let's see them again so the first method is differential leveling so this uh, name is used for when we use auto level to find out level differences and differential level is one of the subcategory so in differential leveling what we do is that if between the two points whose elevation difference we want to find out uh, we place the instrument it doesn't have to be between them it can be anywhere so that the two points are visible and the height of the instrument can cover the two points so if this point was somewhere over here then this setting of the instrument wouldn't allow you to view that point so either you would have to increase the height of the instrument by changing the length of the tripod legs or you'll have to move it somewhere else so that you can see the two points so once you place it like this uh, like we discussed the first reading that you take is the backside on the point whose reduced level is known so this is called as benchmark and in this case a rock placed over here is actually your benchmark whose reduced level is 820 now when you place leveling staff on that point and you set any height of your instrument then when you note the reading on that leveling staff whatever reading you get you add in the benchmark because the height of the instrument is always above uh, the height of the benchmark so when you add it in the reduced reduce level of the benchmark so that becomes your height of the instrument so 820 plus 8.42 so 828.42 becomes your height of the instru instrument from the datum where the reduced level is zero and then uh, the point whose reduced level you want to find out which you want to make your benchmark you place the leveling staff over there you note down the reading now the reading uh, where the crosshairs of your instrument strike the leveling staff that line is actually your line of collimation or line of sight and that is the plane whose reduced level is 828.42 now that is above the point whose reduced level you are trying to calculate so whatever reading you get on the leveling staff you subtract it from the height of the instrument so that you get the reduced level of that particular point so in this case 828.42 minus 1.20 uh, which is the reading on the leveling staff without changing the position or height of the instrument so you get reduced level of that point is 8 to 7.22 so this is called as differential leveling but we have some other methods which may not be as accurate as this one uh, but let's discuss them so another method is barometric leveling so barometric leveling we make use of the difference in air pressure so as the altitude changes or elevation changes the air pressure keeps on changing and there is a relation between how much is the change in air pressure uh, with the change in height so we have different instruments that can actually gauge that uh, so these are the instruments that are also installed in aircrafts as well uh, but we have a better version which is called a serving altimeter uh, which makes use of this property of air and based on that it gives you a uh, increase in elevation or reduced level but obviously this is not as accurate as uh the differential leveling process is using the auto level but still uh, if you don't want that much accuracy or if you want it to be over quickly so you can use this uh, then we have trigonometric leveling so this basically makes use of your ability to estimate or observe angles in the vertical plane so if this is my instrument that can measure vertical angle which is usually a theodolite that has the capability so when you keep the telescope completely horizontal as we did in the case of auto level so that line would mark the zero degrees and when you rotate the telescope in the vertical plane and whatever your new point is you can stop it over there and the instrument will give you the vertical angle now using that vertical angle and the horizontal distance we can easily find out the height in the vertical plane or elevation or reduced level uh, using the trigonometric ratio so in this process you don't need a leveling staff 
what you need is an instrument that can measure angles in the vertical plane and you need a measuring tape or some other instrument that can give you horizontal distance and then by using trigonometric ratios you can find out uh, the elevation so this is trigonometric level and then we have some other methods which are relatively new uh, first we have sonic altimeter that uses a series of high pitch sounds uh, to gauge distance so again this is based on the principle of EDM that we discussed before that it uh, sends out a wave of known velocity and it measures the time the wave took to rebound off the surface whose height you want to find out and then it will give you the relative heights of different points the similar uh, process is used in another instrument in radar altimeter nowadays we have this very high precision instrument called lidar uh, laser detection and ranging so it basically works on the same principle it flies over uh, any area whose elevation differences you want to find out it sends out beams of uh, laser multiple beams and then it can give you a complete profile of the area we call that as digital elevation model you study that in the next semester and that's a very quick method to find out elevation differences in a large area so instead of uh, using your instrument of auto level and taking a lot of random points a lot of info, uh, observations and then performing calculations that is replaced by these new instruments but obviously we don't have them everywhere so we need to know the basic ones as well and then we have the gps so gps doesn't only give you latitudes longitudes can also give you altitudes so if you have a good one you can also use that to find out elevation differences but let's come back to our instrument auto level and let's discuss different parts of the auto level so first you have uh, this instrument Beneath that you have over here you will have a tripod stand on which you will fix this instrument and this has this object lens uh, over here and this is the eyepiece so you view from this side and this whole thing is called as a telescope and the objective of this objective lens is to gather light and from the eyepiece you can actually view an enlarged view of your leveling stuff and the magnifying part of the eyepiece is about 25 to 45 x it depends on the model of the instrument that you're using and then we have this side view above so what this is is basically that uh, over here you get a magnified view so in a large perspective in a large view it is sometimes difficult for you to locate your leveling stuff so in order to set the direction of this whole equipment you can first view through this site which doesn't magnify the image uh, because you just want to locate your leveling stuff you don't need to note down the reading so you don't need magnification so just to set out the direction of this uh, auto level or this telescope first you view through the site so that your leveling stuff is visible and then you can switch to the eyepiece to get a magnified view to note down the reading this is similar to as when you're using binoculars and first you look through naked eye without the binoculars to set a direction of where you want to look and then you use the binoculars for magnified view so looking through the eyepiece is like looking through binoculars and looking through sight is looking just with your eyes and locating the object uh, then we have the circular bubble over here so this bubble would uh, tell you if your instrument is completely leveled or not by completely leveled i mean that the horizontal line or horizontal plane uh, is tangent to the level surface right so that is when the horizontal uh, the circular bubble will be in center and that would mean your instrument is leveled and that is when you can take the reading not before that over here we have this horizontal motion screw so if you have experienced this with your cameras as well that when you are looking through a zoomed view um, moving your camera slightly moves the image a lot so the similar things 
thing happens when you're looking through the eyepiece. By rotating it just a little, the whole image moves by a lot. So instead of moving the instrument with your hand, we use this horizontal slow motion screw. So if you rotate it, it rotates the instrument very slightly so that the image does not change too quickly so that your leveling staff does not get out of view. So if you move it with your hand, there's a chance that it will get out of view and then you'll have to reposition yourself again. So if you want to move the image slightly, then we make use of this horizontal slow motion screw. So uh, here's a picture of Topcon Auto Level, a model, a similar model that we have in our lab as well. So over here we have the circular bubble. Uh, over here we have the side view, the eyepiece, the objective lens, the horizontal slow motion, leveling screws, and beneath that you have the tripod. So when you want to level your instrument, first thing is to roughly level it using these tripod legs. So that is an approximation to bring your instrument um, roughly to a level position. And then you can use these leveling three leveling screws with the instrument. Now, when you ro rotate uh, these leveling screws, the instrument moves up and down from that position of leveling screw. So by using three leveling screws, you can tilt your instrument until the bubble comes in the center and your instrument is leveled. Then this instrument is not used alone. We have discussed that you need a leveling staff with this instrument. And we have different versions of leveling staffs. Some are in fit, some are in meters. We have uh, different patterns of graduations on these instrument, uh, on this leveling staff. So we have a number of variations. We'll discuss that in the lab. Uh, but just for a brief view, uh, on this instrument, you can see this is just like uh, a ruler that you use. We have uh, these graduations on it. And um, over here, you have one. So if it is in meters, that would mean over here, we have one meters at the base where you place it on the surface, whose reduced level you want to find out, it's zero. This is one meters and this is two meters. And that would mean that this whole of it is 10 centimeters. So that all of it is 100 centimeters. And we have a one meter difference from one and two. Now, usually when you're looking through uh, a magnified view, you cannot look at look at it like this. Your view would be limited. It would be in a circle with the crosshairs and a very limited view. So that is why they write down this one in smaller font. So that is because when you're viewing it through this, uh, if this big one or two is not visible, so you wouldn't know uh, what part of the leveling stuff you are reading. And this tells you that this is actually one meters. So if you're noting down this reading, you would know it is 1.63 and not 2.63. So let's look at a magnified view. So like I told you, since this four is written over here in a smaller font, that means whatever reading I'm going to take, it's going to be four point something. Now, if we look between two bigger graduations, let's say three and four. Uh, now this line over here means 3.0. This graduation means 3.1, 3.2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and this would be four. So this is how you read it. So if I am right over here, that means the reading is 4.6. If I'm right over here, that means the reading is 4.5. And if I'm over here, that means the reading would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this would be 4.55. So this is basically how you read the leveling staff depending on what type of a leveling staff you are using. And that would uh, give you the least count of the instrument as well. Uh, now there are some other types of leveling instruments, uh, a dumpy level and a tilting level. These were older ones. So the difference was uh, in telescope. So we didn't have a very modern telescope back then. So it was different looking. And also the leveling process, how to level the instrument, that process was a bit different. So. Uh, we had dumpy level and tilting level and then we have more 
modern instruments, the one that we use now, which is an auto level. So that has the capa uh, cap uh, capability to level itself very quickly uh, using the leveling screws. And then we have digital levels, more modern ones. So the benefit of using digital levels is that uh, most of them have a laser to note down the reading. And also it can make a profile of the land as well. It can store the values. So instead of noting them down yourself, uh, the instrument can store it. And then they can also give you a rough map of the area as well, depending on which model you are using. Uh, and then we have leveling staffs that we discussed. So let's move on. So these are different types of leveling staffs. Some are in meters, some are in uh, inches and fit. And a lot of them have, even in the same units of meters, they can have different ways of uh, graduating those values on the leveling staff. So that depends on which staff you are using. So now let's come to the leveling process. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to place your leveling staff at a suitable location. Now, a suitable location is determined by which readings you want to take. If you want to take a lot of readings, then what you need to do is you need to place the instrument at such a location that makes a, as many points visible as possible. Because if you don't do that, that means you'll have to change the location of your instrument again and again. You'll have to level it again and the calculations will be increased. So that is why you need to place it at such a location that maximum points are visible. So once you have decided on the location, you need to place the tripod legs uh, firmly, place them in the ground because you don't want the instrument to be moving once you have started the work. So if you fix the legs in the ground, that means by wind or by a slight push, the instrument won't be disturbed. The leveling won't be lost and the whole observations that you took before won't become uh, obsolete. So once you have done that, you will level the instrument using first the tripod legs by changing their length uh, and that would help you to approximately level the instrument. And then by using the leveling screws, you will perfectly level the instrument. Once that is done, uh, you will use the eyepiece uh, to focus on the leveling staff. So focusing is important because that eliminates the parallax, uh, which is the blurriness in your image, uh, or the image is not unique. You, you, you get to see two different images. So we have different sort of errors in the image and one of them is parallax and you can remove them by using those focusing screws. Now that was about the instrument. And now comes the other person who is holding the leveling staff at the point whose reduced level you want to find out. Now the person holding the staff needs to hold it vertically. So it shouldn't be inclined forward or backward and it should be placed directly above the point whose reduced level you want to find out. Once that has been done, then you can note down the reading and proceed with the calculations. Now, uh, one thing about this instrument is that you can't use it in isolation. So one person cannot do this job. You need at least two people to do it. One person on the instrument, the auto level, and one person holding the staff. In modern instruments, we have this auto level with a laser. So once you've leveled it, you and you have sighted the object where or the location where you want to find out the reduced level, you turn on the laser and then you can leave the instrument as it is and you can go to the leveling staff, hold it yourself and laser would point on the leveling staff and you can note down the reading over here. So that means you don't have to look through the enlarged view uh, through the telescope to note down the reading. You can do it while standing with the leveling staff, noting where the laser is and then noting down the reading. But the instrument that we have, we need two persons minimum. So the person holding the leveling staff needs to make sure that one, he holds it from the sides so that the reading is not hidden behind his fingers. Two, he needs to hold the staff vertical. That is because if the staff is inclined forward or backward, the reading would change. So what would happen if the staff is inclined forward? That means the reading 
on my auto level would be greater than the reading there should have been had the staff been vertical and if the staff is inclined backwards then again the reading would be more than the actual reading so that means the person noting down the reading at the instrument can ask the person holding down the staff to move the leveling staff forward and backward and he can look for the reading when the reading is minimum so at that point he can ask the leveling staff person to stop and then he can note down the reading another thing that the leveling staff person needs to take care of is that since the instrument can open up to 5 meters uh, and it is made up of metal so he needs to make sure that there are no wires above uh, that can hit the leveling staff uh, so that's a safety hazard with the leveling staff as well. So these were the temporary adjustments that we were talking about. Selection of a suitable position from where you can view maximum points. Now remember, the instrument does not have to be placed between the two points whose reduced level you want to find out. So there is no centering in auto level. You can place your instrument anywhere. So even if the two points that you want to measure are here and here, you can place your instrument over here. So the instrument doesn't have to be between the two points. Then fixing the level with a tripod stand, approximate leveling by the legs of the tripod stand, and then perfect leveling by the three leveling screws. Focusing the eyepiece and the object glass to remove the parallax and then taking the staff reading. So this is another example of how it's done. So in this case, you have placed your instrument over here and you have leveled it and your line of sight is horizontal and leveled. This is your benchmark whose reduced level is 100. So first you put a leveling staff over here and another leveling staff at the point whose reduced level you want to find out. Now, one way to do it is to first find out the height of the instrument like we did before. That would be 100 plus 0.973. So that would be the height of the instrument. And then to find out reduced level of this point, you subtract 4.987 from that value to get this reduced level. Other way is by subtracting the difference between these two points, 4.987 minus 0.973, and then subtracting the difference from 100, you can directly get the reduced level of this point. Now, like we discussed before, more the reading on the leveling staff, that, me that means that point is lower. And if the value on the leveling staff is lower, that means that point is higher. This would be our back sight and this would be our foresight. So uh, the different types of leveling are simple leveling and differential leveling. In simple leveling, what we do is that we place the instrument exactly midway between the two points whose uh, backsight and foresight we are going to take. So that process is called as simple leveling. And in differential leveling, we take a number of measurements. Uh, the points can be at random distances from the instrument. So here it is. In simple leveling, midway, the instrument between the two points. And in differential leveling, the instrument can be placed anywhere. So this is the difference between simple leveling and differential leveling. So uh, in leveling process, again, one more example. Uh, this is your benchmark whose reduced level is known. And this is the point whose reduced level you want to find out. If we are doing height of instrument method, that means we will take the reading on the benchmark. The reduced level of the benchmark is known. And you add the reading of the leveling staff in that value. So that becomes your height of the instrument. Then you place the leveling staff on the point whose reduced level you want to find out. Whatever the reading is, you subtract it from the height of the instrument to get reduced level of that point. So the just a quick review of the definitions. Benchmark was a point whose reduced level is known. So in this case, this was the benchmark earlier. And once you have found out this value, so now we have two benchmarks over here. Now, whenever you place your instrument somewhere, the first reading that you take, uh, usually it is taken at a point whose reduced level is known. So that reading is called as backsight. When you add backsight, 
in the value of the benchmark that becomes your height of the instrument and height of the instrument is basically a reduced level of uh, imaginary plane so the line of sight which is which is intangible but it's imaginary intangible thing and its reduced level is known as height of instrument foresight is the reading taken which is the last reading taken in any setting of the instrument so in this case we only took two readings one backside and the other reading would be called as a foresight 